This is Elias Dufexis. You're watching that Tom Clancy show. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm finally out of the gr- Wait. Wait, this was- This was here the whole time. I've been in there for nothing? Well, that sucks. But welcome to the show. Uh... I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't think I was going to hit 50 episodes, uh, especially not this quickly. Like, oh, no, what did I just do? New set. I'm still figuring it out. Okay, guys. I think. Oh, that that could have been bad. Was that bad? No, that was only moderately bad. Okay. Whew. Sorry about that. Well, oh, no. I've accidentally given away one of my new things. Why is that taking so long? Go away. There we go. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really think that I was going to be at 50 episodes, and surely not this quickly. Uh, I started this version of the show back in May, uh, right, you know, right back there in the garage. And uh, for the first episode, I just pulled some news stories and talked about it for an hour or so. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was certainly entertaining. Uh, this is of course about the third or fourth or fifth or whoever knows what iteration of the show. Uh, but you know, thankfully the whole news thing didn't really last too long. And I got it myself, uh, a guest interview, uh, with my friend Rami Ishmael and he, really kind of helped put the show in the right direction. Not like him specifically, but the whole like guest interview thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, the show kind of went along in its own silly kind of way where I'd come out and I'd say a couple things and I'd say hi to everybody. How's everybody doing? Specifically things like, hey, pretty much everybody from the VRA live uh, Discord server, thank you all for being here. Like one, to Boston to support my guests. So I'll tell you all about in just a moment, but thank you most of all for supporting me. So, um, you know, and the, the show has been pretty effective, but I feel it's kind of time to change things up a little bit. So I'm moving out of the garage and thankfully, uh, I found this wonderful set was already here and it came with a brand new VR human background and what looks to be a significantly more comfortable couch. Uh, the only downside is that if you saw earlier, Elias Tefexis and Brian Edwards are just sitting over there doing nothing. Get a job. Jeez. But let's be honest. That's not why you're all here. I'd like to think that you're here because I make with the funny, but it's most likely you're here for my guests. If you aren't here for me, thank you. Worry not. The guests aren't going anywhere. They will continue to sit on the couch and answer my questions, or my name isn't Mr. That Tom Clancy. So why am I talking so much right now? Simple. I kind of want to make this a late night show, except not late at night, and you all are my studio audience instead of all those weirdos in New York and Los Angeles. Ugh. Well, moving forward, that's how the show's going to work. Uh, I'm going to say hi, I'm going to tell a few jokes, introduce my guests, and maybe I'll get back into making video promos for the shows of the week, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, let's see how the new workflow works before I start making any big promises. Um, you know, Fictional Cat, that is a really nice cactus. Um, I don't remember who made it, though. So, uh, without further ado, let's get to the show. Don't worry. I will have jokes tomorrow. I'm not going to overnight patch them out like I released a certain mobile game with an opening cutscene that equates cultural movements to a vast conspiracy theory or something. So, without further ado, my guest today is an artist, a poet, an actor, and probably a hell of a lot more things that I missed along the way. Bits and pixels. Uh, let's give a warm That Tom Clancy Show welcome to her first butcher. Let me remember which button it is. It's this one. Hello. Are you on? Are, are you? Are you still muted? Hello. Up. Oh, ha 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 ha. 
technical issues. Uh, this never happens. Yes, I was still muted. I did say hello, though. Gosh, technical difficulties. God. Sorry about that, Tom. Don't worry about it. I mean, like, yeah, we, we, we were talking earlier. But on the positive side, Duckus is here. Say hi to the audience. So Duckus is here, and I can pick him up, and we can hang out. And uh, I think my coffee cup is hiding somewhere as well. Where are you? There we are. Oh, dear coffee, I love you. I love the new setup. It looks fabulous, Tom. Thank you. And to think that it was just sitting outside my garage door the whole time. Sometimes we just got to venture outside, don't we? I mean, I don't like the outside much, but, you know, when you do go out there, sometimes it's surprisingly good. Uh, that's what I've been told, but uh, they don't have uh, index trackers out there. Well, not yet. Give it time. Give it time. Yeah. And one day they'll be uh, sewn into the trees, and um, I imagine. Well, I mean, I, I have Google Earth, so. Mm. There'll be drones with trackers. Who knows? Who knows? The future is coming. Yeah, hopefully not Elon Musk's future. I don't really believe that his neural link is going to have adequate protection. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I read this fabulous book written by Syriac Harris last year. It was my favorite book of last year um, called Horse Destroys the Universe. And it was all about somebody, a mad scientist who put a chip just like the Neuralink into a horse. And it became very psychedelic and, and sort of, it was it was a brilliant book. But I, when, I, when I saw the pig, I thought, oh God, I really wanted that to be fiction. Really wanted that to be fiction. <laughs> but no, <laughs> not today. <laughs> There's a part of me where I look at it and I'm reminded, at least in that particular instance, of Ghost in the Shell standalone complex where they were using oh, yeah. yeah pigs to grow organs for transplants. And I'm like, oh, huh, that's actually a lot smarter than going with Michael Bay's The Island. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Why clone the whole human when you can just grow the thing you need in something that's not going to complain when you kill it? Yeah, although if you go for the Ma Margaret Atwood sort of um, speculative fiction line of things, the Pagoons definitely worked out how to complain. So, you know, there's all sorts of unintended circumstances and consequences that will happen from all of these kinds of experiments that we can't even dream up just yet. Unless you're Margaret Atwood, I reckon. She's probably onto it. Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing except William Gibson. <laughs> yeah, well... William Gibson did start the whole cyberspace thing, didn't he? So yeah, that was he kinda did. Oh, uh note to self, uh wait a second. Come here, come here. I need No! Everything's going not where I want it. Come here, Penn. What's going on? Get William Gibson for show. <laughs> yes, good idea. Gosh, that would be a well, a coup if you could get him. I know a guy who knows him. Well, go for gold then, I reckon. I'd, I'd definitely watch that. Yeah. There's a couple authors I'm trying to get on right now. Uh, specifically, I'm trying to get uh, Marina J. Lostetter. She wrote the Numenon series, uh, mm -hmm. which book three just came out last week, and I finally have time to sit down and read it. And mm -hmm. I dig it. Um, and I I'd love that you like book so much. I remember reading somewhere that you used to be a bookseller as well. Me mm -hmm. too. Yeah, book I worked... <laughs> I worked at my local bookstore for just about a year, and uh, yeah. I regret leaving that job just about every day. Yeah, gosh, they're they're lovely bookstores, that's for sure. Yeah, none of that like Barnes and Noble there. junk. Local. No, yeah, mine nothing. was the, the one that I worked in was an independent one too, and there was a, a venue by night and a bookstore by day. It was um, at the time Melbourne's only licensed uh, bookstore, so you could uh, have a cocktail and Christmas shop at the same time. Hmm. That sounds amazingly Australian. It was a great job. Hmm. Well, uh, that kind of leads nicely into the first question that I ask everybody. But since you're not a game developer, I kind of have to open it. Uh, I kind of have to open that question up a bit. So uh, mm -hmm. what are you playing and or reading or watching at the moment? Oh, my gosh. I am playing things. I've been playing Box VR which has been fun, and Beat Saber, those two things I play. And we've also been playing something called the Talos, Thalos Principle, I think. It's, it's like a philosophical sort of Is that the puzzle one, game. yeah, where it's like you're doing effectively like a Turing test for an AI? 
you think it is? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do play games. I, I don't play a lot of games. I mean, Tilt Brush is my jam. But um, to sort of let off steam, a group from the VRA Live uh, uh, group often sort of, we all stream single player games at the same time and cheat off each other. It's great fun. <laughs> Rider and error into that one too. So Nice. Yeah, I've been uh, still just playing Beat Saber is really my thing right now. I've I've fallen out of love with Destiny, and I'm mm-hmm. like I'm really sad because I really love that game, but at the same time, I just I just can't give a damn right now. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but yeah, is what it is. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm reading uh reading the. What I'm guessing is going to be the last in Marina Lost Setters uh, series, which makes me sad because I like it so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of sad. And I'm also reading a four. I I'm, I read like two books at a time. Yeah, I yeah. I have a pile, that. and I'm always sort of working through them. I've been doing a lot of research for a project I've been working on at the moment, so I've been revisiting old um, sort of like manuscripts that have no um like the codex seraphinius or the voynch manuscript stuff like the the language is nobody's been able to decode it or work out what language it is uh most of those books are well the codex seraphinius was the uh, 80s i think but the voynch manuscript was like ancient ancient nobody even knows what century it's from so um big questions like you know who invented this is it a cipher is it a code is it just nonsense were they crazy um fabulous that's what I'm. why not <laughs> all of those things it could be a mix of all of those things but yeah, yeah you know bosch paintings william blake oh my god i've been reading a little bit of william blake lately refreshing myself with those watercolors as well they're just so beautiful i'm more of an oil paints guy but you know that's okay yeah i mean look man watercolors are great and they make for an excellent style in tattooing mm. But I just like my oil paints, man. I like I like that texture, you know, like like the the you don't even have to to actually even touch it. It's just like you can look at it and you can tell what it feels like. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, there's uh, benefits to both styles for sure. Oh, uh, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, all art is good art, even <laughs> if bad art. I mean, but then again, there's like I mean, George W. Bush's paintings are kind of shit, but. I didn't even know he was a painter, but that's. I mean, if you, it's probably uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Very generous to call him a painter, but he has painted. Finger paints? I'm pretty sure they were finger paints, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, like he, ever since he retired uh, uh, from being president, he has like devoted himself to. The, I'm guessing he's acrylics. Okay. Uh, you know, so, like uh, you know, you know, oh. no shaded acrylics, you know, but you know. Oh. I use acrylics sometimes, yeah. I like I like mixed media, so I'll often use watercolors and inks and glued down old, you know, treated paper that's been soaked in something and tea and you know all sorts of stuff. So just whatever, whatever works really. That if was... I can, if I can glue it to something, generally I'll work with it. That was something that I came across uh, in preparing for the show today. Is uh, I kind of had this uh naive notion that everybody in vra live hi guys uh was basically a virtual artist uh and you, i mean you know, that's a fair assumption to make although well, I... sorry tom oh no i was just gonna make a samuel L. jackson joke oh okay go ahead <laughs> uh uh or as we learned from samuel L. jackson in the long kiss good night when you make an assumption, you're making an ass out of you and umption. So, <laughs> look, I mean, that's the, the one good thing to remember from that movie. Yeah, I actually haven't seen it, but funnily enough, um, my wife was trying to get me to watch it about two days ago, and I was like, no, it's so old. I don't know whether I'm going to watch that with you. And now she's, she's watching right now, and she's like, see, I told you, you should have watched the film. I was, she was right. I should have watched it, then I would have yeah. done the joke. I mean, you, you, we're going to have to watch it now. You should. By virtue, like, it is about as 90s as an action movie can get, which yeah. is pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely worth it. It's, it's worth a watch. Okay. All right. Well, now I've, I've, I'm definitely going to have to because you brought it up and she has been on, t- on to me to watch it. So, that's just funny because it was right. literally just a day ago. Apparently, and I... me and her are friends. So Yeah, I think so. I think, it, I think you might be. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, you can just be like, hey, the robot I was talking to on the Internet just said, hey, I should watch this movie you've been on my case about. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's been showing me a lot of 90s films lately while we've been in lockdown because they've generally sort of been a little bit lighthearted. Although she made me watch Hannibal the other day. Oh, Hannibal's I an, day already. Uh, and it was like, why? I, oh, my God. That's an early 2000s movie. I know, I know, but... Uh, but the, the 90s, you know, without getting on too much of a tangent, uh, yeah. which happens on the show all the time, uh, the 90s had some of the, I'm not going to say best action movies, but they mm-hmm. definitely had very distinct and bordering on self-aware satirical. I mean, like yeah. a couple of them straight up were like Last Action Hero and True Lies. Uh, mm-hmm. one directed by the excellent John McTiernan and the other directed by James Cameron, who thinks he's God's gift to everything. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like, look, man, Terminator and Terminator 2 were great, but, like, come on. Uh, yeah. He also the directed... Most yeah. Terminator with all of the women leading the cast. I thought that was really clever. I, I It was enjoyable. I enjoyed that. With Sarah I, Connor, it was sort of like the... Uh, the aging matriarch who was, you know, coming to kick ass. It was good fun. We watched that recently too, that, uh, but it's not early nineties. It's just sort of a recently, you know, know uh, I do believe if my memory is correct on this one, that I got, uh, went to the same undergrad school as she did. Really? Yeah. I mean, separated by, you know, like some years, but, oh, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, we even had one of the same theater professors and, oh. uh, uh, he was not a fan of hers. Uh, you know, look, yeah. I'm not going to say she's an excellent actress, but she's also not one of the worst. I've seen the Michael Bay Transformers movies. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, he's also, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, he has very high standards. But Yeah, okay. Well, you know, yeah. I guess yeah. that's the thing about art. Um, it's uh, all subjective. Somebody will love the thing that you love and somebody will hate it. And you know what? That's okay. There's room for everybody so long as nobody's undermining the other ones. So, hmm. Except for that's Twilight. No, there's no room for Twilight. No. You know what? It made I'm me kidding, keep people I'm happy. Kidding. I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was great literature either. The films were, you know, what they were, but... I think there were a lot of people that really enjoyed them, even if it was just a moment in their life where that appealed to them. But, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to take, take that away from somebody else. I just won't watch it. You know, <laughs> it's not my thing. Sparkly vampires. It was a bit like glitter too much, but anyway, you know, for yeah. me, not my thing. I prefer my vampires. Like, I don't know. Relatively monstrous at the very least. Yeah. I don't really want them to be covered in glitter. That's really, you know, mm. <laughs> I really liked Gary Oldman as Dracula and Francis Ford Coppola's movie. Mm, I thought he did mm. a pretty good job. At least he he kind of got the idea of being the dude who was... Uh, I got nothing. I got nothing. Um, yeah. I like the Blade movies. I thought they were pretty fun. And vampires were yeah. cheesy and, and violent for no reason. So that's always fun. Yeah. So. I like a lot of the sort of schlock stuff, like the hammer horror stuff. So that's, I suppose it's not really high, high art or, um, or even, um, even sort of like, yeah, well-made, but they're, they're entertaining. Hey, anyway, I watched, uh, about... I oh, watched sorry. Son of Godzilla last night. So I am like? no one to tell anybody what's high art. <laughs> Well, you know, I think the argument between what's high art and what's low art and what we get from doing, making, or consuming those things is a really interesting thing to sort of think about in terms of creativity. Because sometimes people will get incredible value from making something that maybe isn't high art, but it gives them, you know, a philosophical edge, a new skill, confidence, uh, a way to connect to other people. And, you know, once you put in your 10,000 hours, suddenly you get better at these things and maybe you get closer to high art. So, I mean, I don't think that, you know, if it's low art or low, you know, whatever pop culture that necessarily it's it's a waste of time or that it should be compared in favorably to, to you know, what we think of as high art because high art comes from like, you know, a class background. We We only think things are high art because of, where we went to school, where we grew up, what privileges we had, what we were taught to like, those kinds of things. 
So, you know, how we develop taste as a, you know, as an individual and even as a culture. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a perfect science. Yeah. And then too, we also, uh, a fun conversation that, that, you know, we went off on a tangent. We ended up on like a really relevant place. Uh, Another thing, too, worth noticing is like, you know, here we are in the 21st century and we have this whole idea, this notion of Shakespeare as high art. And that's not to say that some of his plays aren't really, really good. But he good. wasn't high art at the time. Yeah, he exactly. Wasn't, he was seen as like the pop culture of his time. Yeah. He was just so, the dude who wrote plays that everybody went to see. Like everybody likes to exactly. say that like the Globe had like the fancy box seats, you know, for, for uh, the nobility and all that stuff to sit. And they weren't there to watch the plays unless they were. They were there to be seen by everyone else. The plays yeah. were there for the people, you know, and like, I, yeah. I think, too, that like any kind of live art or live theater or, you know, there is a really large social aspect to it as well that can't really be ignored. You can't really say that art exists for for pure art because it, it exists if it's being consumed or watched or, in, you know, interacted with, with by anybody. It, um, it becomes part of this ecosystem um, of which has become, you know, super, uh, you know, damaged by this COVID situation because nobody can go to anything live, which is, you know, uh, we're all finding ways to adapt to that, especially um, those of us who have practices that are both sort of like, I guess, like a traditional stage setting and then, you know, VR or digital worlds as well. I, I try to merge the two together as much as possible. And that's sort of been my, my thing, but. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm uh, the same boat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was talking about theater. So obviously you've come from a, you know, theater and books background, which is fabulous. Yeah. Well, I came from a books background way well before I came, but that's just because my dad was an asshole. But no, uh, I say that and I mean it, but I did love the asshole. Uh, but, you know, my uh, uh, in high school, I developed a love for theater and then I went to college and I studied it there. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when I was, you know, over the few years as I've been working on this show, the whole idea was how do I blend uh, my theater background with my game background? And then mm -hmm. when VR came about and then when I found out that you could do something like this in real time, it was just like, wait a second. Now I'm at a point where I can literally put these two things together. Yeah. You just have to wait for the tech to catch up. I feel, I feel like that too, but then the, the tech seems to like, I'm waiting for it to catch up, but then it overbounds what I'm, what I'm hoping for. And then I'm running to catch up with it. And it's this constant sort of like, uh, battle as to who's going to make the finish line first and it will always be tech but you know well the fun thing exciting. is too is uh, that there's no one finish line no you're right that's true you yeah it, it will go off in fractal directions and there's a hundred different ways to use the things that are being made and to hack them and to you know reinvent them so it's it's a very exciting time to be an artist when you consider all of the tools you have at your disposal yeah I yeah uh, I'm just really at a loss for words because you are well at you like you are one of the best educated people in terms of like just straight art theory that i have talked to in a very long time and well look thank you awesome. but you know i actually don't have a fine art degree i didn't do art at university at all. I did cultural studies, which is sort of the, the science of making meaning. So it is still like a humanities, but it's not a fine arts degree. So I didn't get taught to paint or make VR. I, that's all self-taught, all of it. I was, and I went to university as a, as a, like as an adult, not as somebody who just came out of high school and went to university. I that's went on fine. tour. I, I, went, I went to university right out of high school and I just got a drug problem for it. So, you know, you probably yeah. made the smarter decision. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I think it's different for everybody. And university definitely has its pros and cons and things. But again, because, you know, it's all being ho highlighted by COVID at the moment because universities are all struggling because people can't attend them in person. But um, I do think that the idea of the university is going to have to be radically reimagined in the next sort of 10 to 20 years to see how it copes in terms of you know, changed business models from like the idea of the enlightenment over to something that is like a, you know, a consumer business model where, you know, your students are clients and they're paying for things. So they have to achieve certain outcomes and 
if it's less about sort of preparing people for work and actually preparing people's minds for a philosophical sort of debate uh, or, or, or critical thinking skills, I think that's what's losing at the moment. Critical thinking skills in universities are just being dropped in, you know, in order to support trades and whatnot. And I don't think that that's very wise. I think we need critical thinking skills more than ever at this point. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You will never hear me disagree with a statement that people need to think more. But think critically, like yeah. to actually assess how they come to, like how they come to know something and why they come, like how, how there are different ways of knowing and how they all balance out, I think. Hmm. Well, damn. Uh, today in that Tom Clancy show gets real. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I've gone down the full wormhole. Dude, sorry, everybody. Don't worry about it. If I was like super worried about it, I'd have like cut to commercial. So okay. you can I do mean, that. Okay. Great. <laughs> I mean, I can, uh, always stop the stream. <laughs> True. All but right. Okay. We, we are here now, uh, and something that actually does kind of tie into what we were talking about, uh, mm -hmm. in that we do exist in this weird confluence of tech and connectivity that even in an era where we can't, you know, meet our friends at, say, an mm. art gallery, mm. we can still hop into something like The Wave and mm. all chill at the Galactic Safari. That's very true. And that's very exciting. I mean, actually, before COVID happened, I had already been looking at how to use online spaces more effectively because I live in Australia. So the art scene here, especially the tech arts, the tech art scene is quite small. Um, and there are a few people that are doing really interesting projects and I'm starting to sort of connect with those people, but I felt very much like I was making art in a vacuum. So um, I, yeah, I looked for online spaces and definitely I found my people here. Definitely found my people here. Nice. It's yeah. It's, lovely. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say like really everybody who's in chat right now. I mean, we've got Chroma, Fictional Cat, Sabby, Zandy, Girl Writer, Willow yeah. Moon, you know, uh, y'all are excellent. Uh, yeah, thank you. Plain and thank simple. you for being my people, you know. <laughs> you know hey, some of, you. some of my people are here too, you know, yeah. like like Timmy. Timmy, so ah, good to yeah, see I don't you. Know Timmy, but... Thank you for coming. Uh, Timmy was a guest me. on the show several weeks ago. Uh, um, uh, she is an independent game developer in Halifax. Uh, Amazing. So, like, most of my uh, guests tend to be independent game developers, and, like, I'm at the point now where it's like, don't get me wrong, I love sitting down and talking with indie developers. In fairness, I pretty much love sitting down and talking with anyone, because uh, mm -hmm. everybody's got a cool story, you know, mm. and it doesn't matter, you know, what they're doing or how they're doing it, like, everybody's got a cool story in them, mm. and if they do something cool on top of that, that makes it even more cool. But, you know, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got something they can teach someone else. And that's For the way sure. I look at it. So It's a great way to approach things. Yeah. Uh, I thank a good friend of mine in co my first two weeks of college who verbally smacked most of my biases out of my head. College can be good for that. Yeah, it can be if you're open to it. Yeah, if so, you're open to it, it can be real good for that, yeah. But, yeah, so with the Galactic Safari, you put a lovely piece up. Uh, oh, well, thank you. Hold on a second here. I, I, I made a couple of uh, cards here uh, because oh, I figured these would be more fun. So uh, this is kind of that piece, except this one is, like, clear. Which I thought was like really interesting. You're a woman in a ring, except that she's got like these like she appears to be made of like diamond. I don't have a closer uh, camera angle. I'm just looking. I can't see the um the frame just yet, so Yeah. Sorry. And I'm sorry for not having oh, a closer this camera. Oh, here, yes, yes. She's she's called um, feminine with burning flower, and um, it is the same model that I made in tilt brush that you saw in the Galactic Safari show, but it's been processed in Adobe Dimension. Nice. So I took 
Um, Adobe Dimension is sort of new and it's got some experimental features to it. Um, so they've got a lot of reflective surfaces and different textures you can apply to things. It's, I guess it's like to compare it, it's probably like Adobe's version of Blender, but it's designed to sort of um, output things for AR experiences. Um, hmm. So it, it's sort of, yeah. But because it's still in beta, um, a lot of those textures are, are difficult to reproduce in the AR experiences just as of yet. With the next update, who knows? But um, yeah, that was a lovely collaboration, actually. My wife is a photographer as well, and she took the photograph of the flower that's been collaged and merged in with the space photograph that came from NASA. So oh. I've put those two together so it looked like the flower was exploding behind the, the glass woman. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I you. Uh, you you gave me a lot of stuff to go through. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure what you were looking for. To be honest, no, it's. I, I, don't I would rather have too much than too little. Like okay, if you good. had sent me like three things, I'd be like, I know you've done more than this. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I figured you'd yeah. make your choice, and then we could just talk about whatever you liked. So I did. They may have been a little rushed because I may have bitten off more than I could chew in doing everything for the 50th episode that's okay uh spoiler alert for everybody out there uh if you are also doing your own form of uh, uh online entertainment such as this uh pro tip uh don't do all of your changes at the same time <laughs> oh gosh that was, i hope that was yes. the right one yes it was i like I have this this board over here and like it has sound effects like in case I you know like I say something funny I can <laughs> have a nice little like laugh track there and you know Cute. like if there's a good zinger I got like the Mario coin sound so you know mm -hmm. so that way I can hopefully uh, make up for my other shortcomings uh, so but yeah it, like that was such a cool piece because um, it was just in a weird way, it like I'm trying to find uh, a way of explain or a way of I'm trying to f find the correct words that don't make my thoughts uh, about the piece seem not necessarily simple, but uh, like yours, your piece, I feel in the Galactic Safari was. Uh, the one to me that felt the most uh, grounded in a reality that we understand while at the same time having that edge of uh, alienness that the rest of the pieces also kind of had, you oh, know, look, um, it's part of a wider series I've been working on for probably about a year now called the Circle Series, which is all human forms interacting with circles. So that circle sort of comes back and it it allows me to work across several different mediums. So even from like watercolors to VR, you know, across the whole lot. Um, it allows me to play with dimension and space and um, and I guess with emotion because the circle becomes you know, a metaphor for cycles and for connectedness and all sorts of other things. And it can be changed within the space depending on the medium. So it's very versatile. Yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, just f speaking off the cuff here, uh, a circle could also, it could be a metaphor for uh, just somewhere safe, somewhere uh, protected, mm -hmm. a prison, mm -hmm. a home, a wall, a hell, exactly. I mean, you use yeah. it in that piece as a chair. Yeah, you know, uh, I've got some people are flying through them, people are climbing through them, and they can't quite, you know, it's it's hard to fit. So that you know, you you the circle is is something that's been used in in art for a very long time. It's it's not an old, you know, it's not a, a brand new idea. But I try to with each piece bring my my spin on it. So I've got about thirty five of them now, but I'll probably just keep going. So I mean, why the hell not, right? Well, I figure I'm, you know, hoping <laughs> that eventually after COVID, I'll be able to get back to the idea of putting a gallery show on and I'll probably do a virtual gallery as well. And it would be nice to be able to have a themed exhibition of some description where I'm able to display VR, AR, um, traditional and digital arts all together seamlessly. And because the circles move through several different mediums, sometimes the same piece is recreated in several different mediums, which all add different dimensions to the, the I guess, the metaphor or the meaning of the piece. 
um, it would just be, yeah, it would be nice. It's a good, it's a good overarching theme, the circle series. Well, another thing too, that I uh, noticed when I started doing my due diligence and research for the show is that you dabble heavily in mixed reality. Uh, I mean, I don't really do green screen anything, but I did try a couple of experiments where I was painting with um, paint that was chroma key colors so that I could then use that as a, as a way of... Um, it's funny yeah. that you mentioned that because that particular video... Oh, that's the one you're going to show? <laughs> is the one I'm going to show. Um, in okay. fact, I have it going up now because it, like that caught... like That just to me seemed like the most brilliant thing because... On one hand, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this video and I'm just like, wait a second, where is this coming from? Where, you know, like, was she going frame by frame to key this out? And it never occurred to me that you were actually just keying or that you were using chroma keyed paint. Yeah, yeah, I just use chroma key paint for that because um, I did a series of uh, experiments when I first got VR where I brought in um, collages that I'd made uh, by hand, the traditional style, as images, and then I augmented them with the, the brushes and made worlds out of them, like book worlds where you could sort of see the words everywhere and stuff like that. And that was fun. I sort of thought, well, how could I do the opposite of that and use the VR in the traditional thing? And obviously, without you know implanting a screen in the canvas, you can't really use that. But you can if you use chroma key paint. So I just I gave that a try. It was an experiment. Like so, it actually didn't end up being included in the project that that was commissioned for. We went in a different direction. But um, I've always wanted to go back to that idea and maybe make something longer, maybe for a different band or a different piece. So it's almost too bad in a way because pieces like that are clearly meant to be seen in not normal reality. And as virtual reality has grown leaps and bounds over the last decade, AR sucks. It's not there yet, but when it is there, it's going to be fabulous. I just, I'm just waiting for that, you know, that last little bit of computing power to drop and then everything will fall into place and it will happen in our lifetimes. And it's, you know, if we want to be ready for it, we have to be prepared. So it's like, learn the tech now. I, I'm absolutely certain it's going to be one of the major formats for the future, AR. I got to be completely honest. One of the big things I'm looking forward to with quality AR is a significantly improved Pokemon Go experience. <laughs> I never played the game. Everybody I knew played it, but I you didn't know, get into Normally, uh, especially in situations like now where I have a guest from the other side of the planet, I work in a question about like, hey, Pokemon Go, you're there. Do you want to trade those specific region Pokemon? But because everybody has said no, I've just taken that question out of the roster oh sorry if i had them I'd, I'd i'd just i'd swap but i don't have any the closest i came to it was when i was working at the bookstore and people would come in and out with their phones trying to capture whatever it is they were trying to capture and i'd be like oh for god's sake buy a book or leave <laughs> we have books they're better but you know anyway it's I, funny I, you say I, that it, because my bookstore was also a pokey stop so oh yes well i guess it brought people in sometimes but they, they weren't really interested um in books so. well i i don't know what the bookstore scene is like in australia but at least here the small bookstore lives and dies on events and also yes, partnerships with schools uh so yeah we yeah they used to have some great events back in the before yeah. times before times yeah like i met uh met stephen king's son joe hill uh mm -hmm. just about a year ago now actually Mm -hmm. uh he was really nice uh i've met uh, a couple small sci-fi authors a couple local authors you yeah. know uh i almost got to meet hank green and then i didn't and i was really mad yeah so love that guy ah bummer yeah is what it is right yeah happens but you know well we're not here to talk about me not meeting hank green we're here <laughs> okay, to well. talk about your art and it's so different than what i expected really that's interesting yeah. what well, did you expect I, well again it's just i was expecting uh, another fairly uh, virtual rea like tilt brush or quill or, or uh whatever the other oculus ones are i don't use oculus i don't 
know what they have. But, you know, I expected a lot more work in, like, that genre. But then seeing that you have, you know, like, this pretty sizable, you know, amount of work in other mediums, it was just a big surprise. Oh, well. So... Yeah, I think lots of people have approached um, VR because VR is so new. Everybody approaches it like we're all newbies to it. Like we're all learning and we're all teaching and sharing and all of those things. That's what's great about the VR Art Live uh, community is that there's a lot of skill sharing going on and a lot of supporting of, of people's sort of, you know, works. And um, but because we've all come to this within the last sort of like what four or five years, I'd say at the absolute most. I've only been at this at about a year and a half with VR, but I've been in the arts, you know, either performing or producing, you know, some kind of art for twenty years now. Um, you bring, you know, everybody brings their specialist knowledge to it, and if you're clever, you can share that. So there's lots of ways to approach it. I think everybody's going to approach it really uniquely. But I'm glad you like it. I mean, you know. Uh, I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to art. That's not true at all. No. <laughs> I think we all like what we like. It's like it's it's interesting because quite often the same piece can you know really move somebody, and somebody else is just like, hate it, can't yeah. stand it. Well, what that? What what even was that? You know. Uh, well, and, uh, whenever I end up talking art with people, I always end up talking about Monet because Monet is my dude. Uh, I yeah. really appreciate uh, impressionism. I just it conveys feeling in a way that I can see, which I mean is the point of painting, you know, and it's so interesting to me how uh, I can, you know, look at, I'm not going to bother with his water lilies because whatever with those, but like his London series to me is just like, like that's Monet's work, you know? Uh, But I mean, I've been to London a lot. I've spent time in London. So like seeing those photos, like it takes me back to like childhood memories. Like it it feels like London, you know, like I can, you know, looking at one, I I was like, I remember stepping out of the hotel on an August morning and still feeling like the mist rising from a late night rain and just, you know, Mm. but I don't see how other people can't like look at that same piece and not have that same reaction. But you know, it's, it's so true. It's other people look at that art and they're going to be like, Oh, there's some pretty colors, you know, yeah, but then, well, yeah. Whereas they're going to look over at something like by Picasso and just be like, you know, yeah. just have their mind blown by it. Me either. But I mean, it's interesting because a lot of those old masters, I haven't really spent a hell of a lot of time looking at them. Like some of them. Yeah. But like, I'm more to more likely to look at something like Kandinsky or um, anything detail oriented. Like Paul Loffoli was one of my favorite art- artists, and he sort of drew all of these diagram esque things. Um, uh, so, so like again, like collage artists. Um, I, my my inspirations for for making art and whatnot are are very varied, you know. Um, but yeah, the classical artists were not amongst them, mainly because um, there's an Australian comedian named Hannah Gadsby who points it out beautifully. And she talks about how um, all of the women represented in the art of that time were pretty much naked and, and having a nap. There was, there was a very specific way that men were looking at women and portraying women. And if you look at the sort of the gallery system, um, it's very difficult for a woman to get exhibited in a gallery as an artist. But, it, you know, if you look at all of the paintings, it's, it's men looking at women. So it's, yeah, I, I don't really sort of, I, I'm not saying they're not talented. I'm not saying that there isn't merit there, but it's not been my, my most interesting journey looking at those paintings. Although I've seen some, I know the London series, but yeah. Yeah, there is some definite merit to that criticism. Mm. Yep, Picasso. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but, you know, look, I don't want to yuck somebody's yum. If you love it, go. Oh, you know, actually, I don't really but, give a shit about Picasso. Uh, yeah. It was one of those things where it's like, Picasso, Picasso. And then you actually see it. And I was just like, what's the big deal? Yeah, yeah. There's there's actually been a couple of um there's a Twitter feed of a lady who's gone through and she's re um she's putting captions on old paintings and they're brilliant. They're so funny and I wish I could remember what her name is right now because I only just saw it, but um they've been going for about a year or something. Anyway, it's it's pretty much just like women being bored in classical paintings and just being like, <laughs> Oh god, I wish you'd stop talking. And if you look at paintings under that context, all of a sudden you get this really rich uh you know, sub narrative to, to the history being portrayed by the people who were in charge, you know, patriarchy. I have seen a couple of those, uh, 
I've seen a couple of those uh, yeah. tweets, and you oh know, my God! They Tom, are Tom, did so you know good. that William Blake's wife helped him bind all of his books, all of his beautiful artist books? She helped make, bind, do all of that stuff, and she couldn't read. She never got taught to read. Could you imagine being married to William Blake and not being given the opportunity to read? How painful is that? Why should we, you know, I, I love William Blake's work. I think he was probably a really interesting character, but, but, you know, the circumstances for women to make art and for, you know, women's um, stories and, and, you know, opinions to be sort of like distributed or, um, or, you know, heralded was, was really minute. So I don't spend a lot of time looking at those artists. I, I look for the, for the narrative between the lines. I'm looking for the in-between spaces, which is where people like me, um we're we're hanging out <laughs> i got nothing smart to say on that one except you you are uh, absolutely correct and uh yeah yeah uh, okay all i really have to say on that one is uh hey white guys we're kind of the worst well uh, you know i don't want to say that either but like i'm what i mean is that you know obviously i feel we as, need as a white man i'm allowed to say that Okay, well, I'll let you say it. I won't say it, so Twitter won't murder me in my sleep. It's okay. They, they, <laughs> every. Oh man, I, I wish that I had a dollar for everybody on Twitter that I disappointed. I'd have uh, like fifty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, hi, Adam. Uh, sorry, my uh, friend Adam, who's down uh, in Kenosha, uh, is the current scene of American unrest right now. Uh, oh yeah. Which is only about a 45 minute drive south of where I live. Yes, gosh. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. But uh, we're not here to talk about that today. Uh, well, uh, the last big thing I have on my list of uh, questions and everything is I know you can't show anything, uh, uh, you know, related to it, but so you've got this project. I believe called Electric Cathedral. Yes. That is, uh, you 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 got a government grant to work on it, so congratulations yes. there. Thank you. The three of us did, so it's it's not just me. It was uh, Kevin March and Kylie Sopsky. My wife is a poet who we write plays together. That's been a thing we've done before in the past. So we're very lucky and very grateful. Yeah, we've got the support to to produce. Well, not to produce. We're developing the show, so we don't actually have to stage the show, but we have to design it for flexible delivery so neat now uh, yeah. i know you can't get too deep into it but like can you just give us like a quick like uh overview elevator pitch kind of thing for it or for sure for sure so electric electric cathedral oh i should be able to say it electric cathedral is um a a choral setting an experimental one so it's for voices uh in terms of the composition uh, there'll be six movements that explore different um, different aspects of uh, human psyche and um, the idea of what we want to do is we want to sort of give the the audience or the viewer um, a sense of awe of like this you know something you can't even talk you, you know it's it's it it baffles them it's so big that it it you know the feeling that you get when you stand in a cathedral you want to give them that but you want to give that to them with with VR, with AR, with singing, with you know visual projections, and the way we're developing it is um, it's kind of modular, so you can put it together, say with visual projections on a traditional stage using X amount of singers, or you could have it as a VR exhibition where people are attending, and when you get close to a, one of the structures or one of the pieces of artwork, that they can hear the songs. It would be wonderful if we could actually stage it in VR. I would love to do that, something like that in VR chat, like with six or 12 or however many singers they end up using in the end, with headsets in different places actually linked in performing the thing. That would be amazing. But um, that's the thing to work on once we've finished writing it. That's the next the next step. Nice. Uh, yeah. That is that's what I'm looking for. Lofty. It's lofty, but you know yeah. what? Dream big. Dream yeah, big, because... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know you can always like cut it back and bring it more yeah. into scope but it's it's yeah. so much harder to try and make something bigger yeah 
Well, we, we've done other productions before where we've used VR in traditional art settings, um, performance settings, where you know you use visual projections that are 2D, but they've they're of art that's been made in 3D. And I've sort of got a bit of a trick where you give the illusion of depth, even though it's 2D. Obviously, it's not actually 3D, but you get the idea that through movement and motion that there are, you know, you can see all angles of it at some point. So, you know, I'm experimenting with how best to use that in a traditional setting, but, you know, uh, every day I, I learn a new thing and I apply it to what we're working on. So I'm just working, working every day, making, making stuff. I know that feel. Yeah. I know that feel. Yeah. Well, uh, uh before we move on to the next portion of the show uh fictional mm -hmm. cat has like eight billion channel points and uh he, he <laughs> has uh redeemed enough to request that you dab what is that i don't even know what that is uh well imagine i have arms for a moment and i am i am yeah. making a v here with my left arm and then i'm okay. putting my face kind of towards uh my sh like chin on my shoulder going into the pit and then, what, what, what am I? What, what, what is the significance of the dab? It, it, it's like a, I don't know. It's like a kid thing or something. I just it thought like it was funny. Fortnite dance? What is? Yeah, it? it's like a know. Fortnite dance. It like predates the Fortnite dance, but it's a Fortnite dance. Okay, um, fictional cat. I could say hi, but I don't know what that is. I sort of. I mean, I could put my hands up. I, I maybe I'm just no. showing my age. <laughs> I don't actually know what a dab is. I mean, you know, like. Hello. I uh, can say that. my personal favorite thing where the dab has ever shown up was there was yeah. this hardcore conservative congressman who was okay. getting uh, his official photos uh, taken for his uh, uh, getting sworn in and everything. And he has teenage son up there with him. And every mm -hmm. time a photo was being taken, the kid was just like dab, you know, in every photo. And I'm just like, oh, my God, this kid is the hero we all need right now yeah. because he just bombed right. every official photo that yeah. this guy is ever gonna well, have very very admirable fictional cat i'm sorry i i, I don't understand i don't know what the dab is so i don't know how to do one but um he says it's all acceptable <laughs> pardon me uh, he said it was all acceptable all acceptable okay yep. thank you crazy well, arm movements thanks for the support here though fictional cat that means a lot thank you Fictional Cat, Mod Supreme. Also, uh, if uh, just to cut real quick over here, uh, he's also my studio horticulturalist. Really? So, yeah, uh, he, he made that cactus. Oh, he made the cactus. He made oh, the cactus. Cool. Yeah, now both of my mods are, uh, what's what I'm looking for here? Uh, both of my mods are represented on the set. Cute. Mm -hmm. Where are they? So uh, well, the well, fictional cat. cats the cactus, and then Brian uh, is. Uh, let's see, I believe it's this button. Yeah, Brian is there on the left, holding up that boombox uh, with Elias, who's just sitting there staring at me. Get a job, you two. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, Fictional cat will have to dab for us in uh, VR chat now. Yeah, yeah he, might have to show me how to, if you show me how to dab in in VR chat, I'll give it a good go. Fictional cat, okay. Next Dude, time I need there. to see you dab in VR chat because you've hung out with him. He's got that like cool like little Cheshire cat thing going on. Like, I need to see that happen. Just saying. So, uh, his controller side. Of course they did, and so did mine. <laughs> No. Well, uh, Rev, for one, it has been awesome to sit down and chat with you because you're fucking smart as hell and it's great. Uh, Thank uh, you. But before we go, I have one last thing that I like to do. And it's a little bit that I call the five questions. Now, the five questions are five questions that I prepared before the show that have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about thus far. And as okay. our conversation has gone very wide and far today, they really have nothing to do with anything we've talked about thus far. Okay. All right. Um, so question Ready. number one, uh, Star Trek or Star Wars? 
neither. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I opt for the third option. That's fair. What's what's your third option out of curiosity? Uh, alien. Word. Alien. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> don't, don't. What are you sorry for? That movie's excellent. Yeah, it's a great movie. Uh, I mean, the first two were some of the best pieces of sci-fi cinema ever committed to film. Agreed. So, and I mean, I I have like a weird soft spot for three, and then everything four yeah. can die in a fire. Was three the one directed by David Fincher. What or was that? that four? Was no, three, three the one directed by David Fincher? Yeah. Yeah, it went it, like it was like one, two were like their own thing, and then there was like three doing its own thing, and then four uh, the rest of them. So yeah, I I didn't hate it. It was just like. Wow, that was Different. unexpected. But you know what? Go for it. Yeah, it well, was good. Well, uh, going back to earlier in our conversation, William Gibson wrote a screenplay for Alien 3 that was rejected, and Dark Horse Comics what? turned it into a comic book. What? How mm -hmm. do you reject William Gibson? Oh, my God. What's wrong with him? Okay, right. right. I'll have to go look at that comics. I love comics, by the way. Love them. But I nice. haven't read that one. I'll have to look at it. Uh, all right. All right. Two. Question number two. What's your favorite street food? Oh, God, street food? Mm. Mm. It's, it's kind of become one of my... Ice cream? Mm. Mm. Ice cream. Ice cream. I think ice cream is my favorite. Yeah, just answer for everything. Ice cream. <laughs> okay. Ice cream. I guess that's fair. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, question number three. This is just a pure Australia question brought on by my uh, understanding of the motorsport heritage of the country. Uh, okay. Ford or GM? I don't have a license. I can't okay. drive a car. I don't know anything about them. If they've got four <laughs> wheels and they go in the forward direction, I figure it's a car, but I don't actually know anything about them, and I couldn't tell you uh, a Ford or a GM. Sorry, I wouldn't know. Duckus is disappointed. All right, Duckus, it's okay. Go fly south. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm not from this country. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I live here. I've lived here a long time, but I'm actually from from all over i'm from canada originally so i was about to say you don't sound particularly australian either uh you know i've i've lived all over the world and i'm very lucky to have traveled that way and i i'm here at the moment but um currently it, w it was our plan to to go to europe at the end of this year although that obviously is impossible right now we'll we'll look at that maybe in just the a teeny future. bit just uh, a teeny bit we're here now yeah idle curiosity where in canada i was born in toronto Oh, okay, cool. I love that town. Yeah, it's a good town. It's a good town. It's I've cold, been though. several times. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, real cold. So uh, cold. Oh, my God. I went to WrestleMania there back in 2002. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's like a more Canadian story that a person could have than going to a professional wrestling event in Canada. Okay. It's like, well, well, it's uh, as, as I have learned of the Canada is that yeah. Canadians love professional wrestling in a way that we Americans just don't fully understand despite wow, okay. loving it ourselves a lot. Okay. So, there you go. Uh, it was even on uh, Canadian sports television oh, while well. we were there. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That sounds like you had fun. Oh yeah. It was a great time. Um, all right. Question number four. Uh, hopefully this one will draw another answer. Uh, uh, what is the best mythical creature? A phoenix. Word. Phoenix, yeah. I'm down. I'm down. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. It was a, a galactic safari answer, too. Actually, yes, Girl Rider made an amazing phoenix that was featured in the uh, galactic safari. Uh, it was absolutely wonderful. And I have a picture of it right here. No, I don't. Sorry. Oh, 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 no. oh well. Okay. Sorry, well, Girl Rider. But if memory, if memory serves, uh, uh, Girl Rider and I might be talking, and a few other people who are in chat right now, might be talking about their appearances on the hot seat later this month as well. Well, very good. I will definitely be looking out for all of those. So, uh, and j just in case you do miss them, uh, they're usually up on YouTube within 12 to 24 hours. Uh, Brilliant. Th thank you, YouTube audience. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, ah. So, <laughs> I have, I, I, I'm <coughs> drunk with power. I have facial expressions now. It's <laughs> shocking. 
So uh, I need to use them more or not use them too much. I don't know. One of the two. Um, all right. Question number five. Uh, mm -hmm. What is a completely random and non-binding prediction that you would like to make right now for the future of mixed reality? Oh, God. That the Apple glasses will eventually exist, but they will come much later than I want them, which is right now. I think they will come probably in the next three years, but I want them today. <laughs> That's what I, I imagine. Mixed reality. I can make AR with Apple glasses. Cannot wait. It's going to be good. Man, I have a... You're not... I, no, I, I, I'm wearing an Apple watch and I have an iPhone sitting you know, uh, just outside of arm's reach over this way. And yeah. I just, uh, I got LASIK uh, nine years ago now. Okay. And so like, oh, you asked me to put a box with televisions in it on my face. Yeah, no problem. You asked me to wear sun, uh, sunglasses uh -huh. all yeah. over. You asked me to put on normal everyday glasses now that I don't wow. have to after wearing them for my entire life. Mm -mm. yeah right no like go like full-on microsoft <laughs> hollow lens eyeballs don't you you're one of those are you one of those because we were talking about the Neuralink before and you were like mm -mm. but like would you put a contact in your eyeball so oh, you could I've see worn, yeah i've worn contacts yeah like i'd wear like tech contacts in a heartbeat yeah. you know yeah. but like i just i don't want to wear like if i'm gonna if i'm gonna have an augmented reality device like i yeah. want an augmented reality device you know like i want microsoft yeah. hololens like i want to walk around with like that stupid halo with like the weird like like i don't give a shit man i want like i want the <laughs> best experience possible and i don't care if it makes me look like some reject from bespin like i'm all <laughs> over it well, you know, speaking as somebody who straps a computer, you know, a couple of computer screens to my face for, you know, several hours a day, um, I, I don't have the problem with the glasses because I sort of think that, like, with augmented reality, I will, I think that we will still want to probably be able to take them off, you know, mm -hmm. and um, stop the experience. I think that when we do get proper augmented reality and everything is everywhere, here's my prediction, that we will be paying for a channel where there is nothing. Where there are no adverts, <laughs> that is my prediction. Eventually, when it really flies, the, there will be so much, there will like be a base channel where everybody puts everything in, and it will be like horrible. And then you will be paying for only the stuff that you see. You'll be paying for blockers rather than additions. That's my, that's my thing. That's what I reckon. Mm. I okay. really am sad because that's probably how it's going to work out. Yeah. But you know what? Where there is chaos, there is opportunity for us artists that are always trying to uh, put our work out there and are, you know, generally in the unsupported uh, or underrepresented category. There are in between spaces in chaos. So you can always go there and look for those spaces. So I'm not too sad about it, but uh, I think it will be a very contested space. Here you go. Cool. Well, Rev, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It has been a delight, Tom. I, I know that it must be difficult for you to come back in time to our present to be on the show, but we <laughs> super appreciate all the effort that you took to be here. Um, and you too, Tom. Thanks for making me your 50th guest. Oh, hell yeah. And don't worry. There's still a very special 50th uh, episode thing to come up. But uh, when I made the shift from the garage to here, I forgot to bring the little fancy box that tells people where to find you on social media. Uh, so if people want to keep up to date with your art and everything, you know, the people who are here who aren't from VRA Live, uh, what's your, uh, where can people go to find your work? I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I have a website. Everything's actually linked through my website. So just reversebutcher.com. That's probably the easiest way to sort of touch base and everything else can go through there. Awesome. It's easy to remember. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks again for being on the show. And I'll be back with you in just a moment here. But for everyone else, uh, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed there's a, there's a red button right here. And as we all know, when there's a red button, we got to press it. Happy 50th episode, everybody. I quite literally could not have done it 
without all of you here watching day in, day out, through the weeks, uh, through the months. We started on May 15th, if memory serves. And, you know, you guys, uh, a lot of you have been there for every step of the way. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support, for the jokes, the camaraderie, uh, to uh, Brian and Fictional Cat, who are uh, my main mod crew. Like, you guys help keep chat from devolving into something crazy and all that stuff. And thank you uh, to all of my previous guests, my future guests. Y'all are excellent. And thank you so much for joining me on this, like, silly and crazy journey. Um, yeah, I'm kind of choked up here a little bit. <laughs> uh, so, like, uh, let me just put on my happy face. Uh, say thank you guys so much. Uh, we've got three more shows coming this week, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Friday. I forgot to take a notice to who all of this was for. Uh, yeah, Brian, you do mod here if memory serves. So, uh, I mean, otherwise, you know, why the hell are you over there? And as I said earlier today, get a job. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, so I've got a couple really excellent shows coming up uh, this week. Tomorrow, I forget exactly what time. I want to say 10 p.m. Eastern. I've got the two hosts, Alex and Skiva, from the Between Realities podcast on YouTube. Wednesday, I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, times, all that stuff. Look at my face. Look at the fear of my face being beside Elias. Hey, man, I just used the headshot you sent me. Uh, but otherwise, seriously, guys, bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all the support and the love and everything. Uh, this 50 is as much for you all as it is for me. And I can't wait to see you all after 50 more. Um, maybe it won't take 50 episodes for me to come up with scene improvements like it did this time. So... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to pretend like you laughed with me on that one. So, uh, everyone, thank you all so much. I will see you all tomorrow on the next brand new episode of That Tom Clancy Show. And until then, like always, wear that mask, drink some water, have some vitamins, and God damn it, just be kind to each other because it's the only way we're getting through this crazy mess. So, thank you all, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great night.